Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. How are you? Uh, it is the middle of April and most of the snow has melted here. So that is definitely something to celebrate. We've had lots of things to celebrate here, uh, here at Jolene Knits A Lot. Uh, and one of those things is uh, Easter with my family. So last Sunday we spent with my brother's family and my parents my nephew came out from Vancouver where he's currently studying and I got to give him his frog. And let me tell you, um, the frog was a big hit. There was lots of um, discussion about what outfits the frog should have, <laughs> or what future outfits the frog should have. And, and we looked at lots of videos by the amazingly talented India Rose Crawford, I believe is her name. I'm gonna put her name here and I will link to her videos down below. They're adorable if you haven't seen them. Uh, and this frog gets up to a lot of stuff according to her. So we had lots of discussions about the frog and uh, he was put right to work. And I'll just pop a picture of you, of him here, um, straight into the office nose to the grindstone. So um, it, the frog was a big hit, which I'm delighted. And now my nephew, my other nephew, who is living in Waterloo and studying fancy math, um, might need a fox. When he was little, he had a thing for foxes. He had a stuffed fox that he loved. And I remember when Halloween, he dressed up as a fox when he was quite small. So um, there may be more friends in our future, we'll see. Um, the other thing that we've had to celebrate in the last couple of weeks is my older daughter's birthday. She just turned 17 this past week. And I mean, as your children hit milestones, it, 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 I don't know, I find that I, I see them different, not that I don't see my child differently, but um, 17, this one sort of was like, oh, but the next birthday that she has, she will be an adult. <laughs> she won't really be an adult, but um, she'll be 18. And that that is sort of a, that is a significant birthday. Um, it means a lot. It means she can vote. It means she can go to bars and she can drink here in Alberta. So um, it's shocking when your kids get older because I don't feel like I'm that much older than when I had her and yet here she is an almost adult. So we've had lots of things going on and lots of things to celebrate and I hope that wherever you are you've had lots of things to celebrate too. Uh, I have Another thing to celebrate, and that is my finished Swift again. Uh, it was, shift again, sorry. Uh, it was finished last week, but finally I put some buttons on. I raided my button stash, and I found these, mm, I would say mother of pearl style buttons that were just the right size, and I think uh, are a nice addition to the sweater. They, um, they are noticeable without drawing attention away from the rest of the sweater. And I'll pop up a couple of pictures here of me wearing my new sweater. Uh, it turns out it's a really wearable sweater. And I was a little worried that it would be something that I didn't really get a lot of use out of. Um, partly because the colors I chose um, were a deliberate departure from what I usually wear. Um, but I'm really, really happy with them. And the shape of this sweater is really, really nice. Like it, it feels really good on. Um, the yarn I used makes it quite warm. So I'm not sure I'll get a lot of wear out of it this summer, but certainly into the fall and in the spring as it's cool. Um, but yeah, I'm just really, really happy with how it turned out. Uh, so this is the shift again. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And I used some hand spun yarn by the Fiber Goddess. And I used some Bougie Beaver in the Nest yarn, Nest Sport yarn by Magpie Fibers. And so this is, um, it's done, which is really, really lovely. I have some other finished objects uh, to show you. And I'm really, really sorry, but it turns out most of them are socks. And I'm not usually so monogamous about socks, but but there you have it. Here's a pair of um, socks that I cranked on my machine. This was, I was just sort of playing around with my machine. I wanted to see um, if I could get the tension um, to a, a little bit snugger. And you'll see the next pair of socks I have is knit at a slightly looser gauge. But this is some um, mustache, perfect match 
sock yarn. If you don't know about uh, mustache yarns, she um, dyes amazingly beautiful colors, but also she her, her perfect match sock yarn comes in two 50 gram skeins that are exactly the same. They start in the same spot and they stop in the same spot. So if you wanna make matching socks, you can do that. I didn't, <laughs> mine are fraternal twins. Um, and this is the Bohemian, Bohemian colorway, I believe. And I just used some West Yorkshire Spinners uh, milk bottle for the heels, cuffs and toes. But I was playing around with the gauge and I think you can see this is, um, it's not a super firm gauge, but it is, um, it, I'm quite happy with it. And these, this was cranked on my sock machine. This is my April um, sock tube. And if you can recall, uh, I'm knitting a sock tube a month into a pair of socks. Um, just as a fun way to work through my stash. So this is the April um, the April sock tube that I made. I used some Area 51 striping yarn. Uh, that is a dyer out of Saskatchewan, I believe, which is a province next to Alberta, if you are not familiar. Uh, and this is the Bridgerton Boys colorway. No, I lied. I really apologize. This is actually the Fleur colorway by Mustache Yarns. Isn't that terrible? No, Nomadic Dye Works. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is definitely the Fleur, <laughs> the Fleur colorway, uh, which is a Harry Potter reference from um, Nomadic Yarns. I apologize. But so this was my April sock tube that I just simply turned into a pair. I used a contrast color for the cuffs and the toes. And then I used the same yarn for the heels, making some sort of bullseye um, heels. And I was knitting these in Hawaii, so I'll show you my beach picture of these socks. Uh, and it, they were really fun to knit, but you can see that, let's see if you can see on the camera, that the gauge, the gauge for these socks is a bit looser than the gauge for these socks. So I'm just playing around with my sock machine, trying to get the, uh, not necessarily the tightest gauge, but I wanna get the most consistent small gauge, if that makes sense. I'd like a firm um, fabric, similar to these, um, with a consistent, consistent stitch gauge. And I feel like I've got that here Whereas these socks, the gauge is, is looser. And that isn't a huge deal, uh, but it affects two things. Because the gauge is looser for this one, I have fewer stitches per inch. And that means that these socks are wider than these socks using the same number of stitches. So if I just compare uh, one sock to one sock, you can see that this one is definitely wider. They, they're together here on this edge. And on this edge, you can see that this one sticks out more. So it is wider. So it is a wider sock and that's fine. I know people with wider feet than mine that can wear these socks, no problem. The other thing with having um, a slightly looser stitch gauge for my sock machine is that these socks will likely wear down sooner than um, these ones because the looser the stitch gauge, the less um, resilient the fabric and the more they can wear down. So um, I'm just playing around with gauges. I'm really happy with these ones and I'm gonna try and replicate these um, with some other sock yarns as I continue to play with my machine. So those are two sock tubes that were changed into socks in the last couple of weeks. And I have one, one other pair of socks that uh, I had been working on. This was just a plain pair of socks I had on my needles so that I could knit at various sporting events for my daughter. This yarn is mustache yarns. I'm gonna get it right. In the um, Woodstock 50 colorway. So it was meant to um, represent, each color represents a, one of the musical acts at Woodstock. And so you can see the color repeat starts here and goes all the way to here, I believe. 
so I just you I just knit from top to bottom so that I could pay attention to the sporting events I believe it was probably volleyball with a little bit of soccer and then um, at the end I went in and put in some afterthought heels using the same yarn and so you can see um, they kind of have a fun a fun heel but it's all the same so this I use 64 stitches on 2.25 needles which is my go-to and I just knit some plain stripy socks so now I have a nice stockpile of socks which is handy because every time my, particularly my younger daughter, but both of them, it seems, um, every time they have a birthday party to go to or they're celebrating a friend, they want to give some socks. So it's important for me to keep my sock pile replenished. And those are some more socks that will probably go into my gift knitting stash, although I may keep one of these for myself. But three pairs of socks in the last couple of weeks is not bad at all. Two of them were sock tubes, so... It's not cheating, it's just a much faster way to knit some socks. Now, the last finished object I have off my needles um, is sort of a, hmm, it's not really a half finished object, it's just a work in progress. I signed up for a class through Vogue Knitting Live. Vogue Knitting offers um, online, it's my dog, uh, um, online classes at, at virtual events, um, quite regularly actually. Uh, and the next event that uh, that I found out about through one of their emails is happening at the, uh, actually next week, April 21st. Uh, and I signed up for a class on cross stitching on knitted fabric. Um, it's sort of combining two things that I've been doing lately and I would love to be able to cross stitch on stockinette stitch. This class has you create a swatch that I'll show you right now that is a very um, open fabric. And I think this is just to help you um, recognize where to put your stitches. So as you can see, I've just knit up the swatch. This is knit in a DK cotton, it's Eco Cotton um, by Estelle. Uh, and I think, I think we use cotton because cotton has less stretch than wool. So I've just knit basically a mesh fabric and we'll be doing some cross stitch on this. So that will be um, a fun experiment, but I'm already thinking about how this can be applied to um, a stockinette fabric. Now, I think the reason, so I'm sorry, I've got like something bugging me uh, and I'll try not to let it bother me anymore. Um, I think the reason that we don't see cross stitch on knitted fabric is that the fact that Knit stitches are not symmetrical. They are um, more wide than they are tall. And you see this in um, stitch gauge. A, a common stitch gauge would be maybe, let's say for a fingering weight, if you were making a sock, it might be 26 stitches wide and 32 rows. So you can get more rows in the same space as you can stitches. And so cross stitch is usually done on a very um, symmetrical or square fabric. And that I think is why we don't see cross stitch on knitted fabric. However, <clears throat> I'm interested in giving it a try. And this is sort of a jumping off point. Now this again is, is a knitted fabric with some mesh, but I think I'm going to, I might try knitting, um, knitting up some, uh, stockinette stitch swatches and maybe a garter stitch swatch and actually maybe a linen stitch swatch and see how those fabrics are for a background for cross stitch. Cause that's something that I am sort of interested in, in dabbling with. Um, but for the meantime, I have this swatch and I will be doing some cross stitch on it. The class is online on April 21st. Um, and let me know if you've had any experience with some online knitting classes that you've really enjoyed. I'm trying to branch out and to try different things. Um, I do knit a lot and so it is nice, you probably know, it's nice to try your hand at different crafts. Um, it just sort of, um, I think, stimulates your brain in different ways. And so I'm looking forward to trying out the cross stitch on this. I'm just using some uh, leftover fingering weight yarns for the color of the um, cross stitch. It's a rose pattern. And I think what I'm going to do once it's done is find a way to um, present it so that I can hang it on my wall. I'll let you know how I get on with that. 
um, assuming it's presentable. And I really only have one other project on my needles right now. Finishing up some socks really cleared um, the decks and I don't really have, hmm, that's a lie. I have one other thing to show you, just a minute. I apologize. I have been working on my favorite blanket. Um, you may remember that my favorite blanket is a pattern that is coming out every, about every four weeks. And it's put out by the Bakery Bears at Dan and Kay. The Bakery Bears uh, have a fabulous show if you haven't watched it. It has a lot of really, really interesting content, not just knitting. And um, so this year we're using uh, yarns, two fingering weights held double to create a, a blanket pattern. And every month or every four weeks, there's a new installment. So um, Kay of the Bakery Bears has been dyeing two colors every month um, to represent colors that are blooming at this time of year, presumably where she is because nothing's blooming where I live. Um, and then using those two yarns held together to create this blanket. I um, raided my stash and I pulled out a whole bunch of speckled or variegated yarns that I just haven't been using. They've just been, um, you know, sadly languishing and I wanted to use them. So I pulled them all out and I'm using those ones, each one held double uh, to create the different sections of the pattern. And I just finished the fourth section. Uh, it's a bit crazy, <laughs> it kind of looks like confetti. Uh, this is a yarn uh, that I got several years ago from Ancient Arts, uh, which is a diary out of Calgary, Alberta. It's on their sock NATO base, which is a, a sock base. I think it's like an 8515 um, merino nylon and merino and nylon blend. It's quite a plump sock yarn. And the colorway was a special colorway for a Knit City event that I attended called I Met Stephen West and I liked it. Uh, and it, because that year Stephen West was one of the keynote speakers, he provided a whole bunch of classes that year. And I have a picture of me with Stephen, I'll pop in right here. Uh, and this yarn is meant to represent his absolute love for color. So as you can see, it's a, it's quite a, <laughs> quite a bright uh, color transition. And I'll just show you the rest of my sections. Each section uh, is, is new and improved. And I think the next section that we will be adding on will uh, change the direction of the yarns or of the knitting. So right now it is a triangle. It's getting too big to show you. So that was, that was the January section, February, March, and April. Uh, and then after this, I believe we're going to start shaping this blanket in a different way. So it's essentially a DK weight blanket and I'm going to have it done by the end of the year, which is exciting to me because um, I find blankets, I work on them and then I get tired of them and they go away and then I don't finish them or it takes me a long time to get back to them. Um, I'm looking at you, Granny Straight, which I haven't worked on for a while. Uh, but this one, every few months or every month, I'm, I'm coming back to it and I'm working a section that doesn't take very long. Uh, and then I put it away and then the next month I come back to it. So uh, as you can see, it's going to be kind of a colorful hodgepodge. And I'm totally fine with that. I'm just looking for like a cozy blanket. I, I, I really do enjoy cuddling up under a blanket and my previous um, granny stripe blanket has been subverted by my dog. He likes to lay on it and curl up in it. So uh, it's nice to have a replacement on the needles. So that is my favorite blanket. And I'm so sorry, I almost forgot to show you. Anyway, the last project I have on the needles is um, my June top. This is another um, project that I'm working on for the Beave Along. Uh, if you aren't aware, the Magpie Fibers, uh, the Magpie Fibers Yarn Company ha is having a knit along right now for those people who are using one of their beaver themed colorways. So Bougie Beaver, which is this one, is uh, one of their beaver colorways, as is Little Bit Bougie. I picked up some Equinox sport yarn from them to work up a June tank top and... Let me show you where I'm at. I'm so sorry. There are lots and lots of little ends going on here. 
I am trying to figure out which is the front and which is the back. All right, I think this is the front. So it's just a simple tank top. I have lots of ends that need to be trimmed. And uh, I'm at the point where I'm working just a little I-cord sort of edging to finish off the knitting and I think to give it a little bit of structure because the I-cord edging does prevent it from number one, rolling a lot, and also stretching out. And so that um, is what I'm working on now. I've done I've done both of the um, armholes. I'm calling it that, an armhole. And I've done the neckline. I just finished that this morning. The back dips down a little bit lower than the front. So I'm gonna have to put one of my, one of my finished tags on it so I remember which is the front. They're actually very useful for that. And the last thing I, so there is the, there's the tank top and there's the bottom hem. And the last thing I have to do is the I-cord uh, edging on this hem. Now you can see that it does roll a lot. And I'm hoping that that I-cord edging gives it a bit of structure and stability so that it doesn't roll so much. And then I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with this fabric when I block it. I have blocked um, portions of it just to see how um, the fabric would lay uh, down and you can see just here see where it's not rolling and the stitches are slightly more even and uh, better behaved um that's where I did like a little spot swatch just to make sure that I was happy with the fabric and the gauge that I was getting and I am so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this whole thing reacts to being blocked the other thing I'm looking forward to is trimming all of these ends. I have woven them all in, uh, but I do leave my tails, generally speaking, until I have blocked the object. Um, and the reason for that is that when the um, fabric gets wet and dries, it uh, sort of helps all of those ends settle into place where they want to be. And then I trim them with a little tail left over on the inside so that those tails don't work their way through and show on the right side. So this is another project for the beave along. I'm really close to being done it. I just need to do that bottom I cord edge and some blocking and trimming of ends. But one of the fun things about this project is that because I ordered my, because I was an eager beaver and I ordered my yarn quite quickly, I got this lovely little bag celebrating the beave along. Uh, it's, it's actually a really sweet bag. It's got two little handles on the top and it's got some handles over the side. So it, it uh, snugs up like this and you can have a little backpack if you like, but I just am really enjoying using this bag partly because of that cute little beaver, um, to hold this project. And I think that I will have a fair amount of yarn left over. I bought two skeins of the Equinox, which is a silk and linen blend that I've never used before, but oh, it's quite lovely. So this is how much I have left. I should weigh it. Um, but I do have that bottom I cord edge and I don't think it's going to take that much yarn and I will still have a significant amount left. So my plan is to knit a Sophie scarf out of this really lovely silk and linen blend. And I think it will be really sweet. I'm looking forward to uh, the drape of it. I just hope that I have enough to make it long enough to tie um, double around my neck. So I think that what I'm going to be doing is using... Um, a fairly large needle to get a really drapey fabric. This yarn, uh, again, as I said, it is a 60% silk, 40% linen blend. And there are 365 yards in 115 grams. And so I'm gonna try and use, I think maybe a four millimeter needle to get a really drapey fabric. I'll start it out and we'll see how we get along and if I like the fabric then I'm going to make a Sophie scarf out of it. I'm so excited about that and probably probably it'll be for me I'm going to be honest. So that is in my future and I have one other project that I am excited about getting started on um, once all of this is done and that is a DRK everyday cowl. Andrea Mowry uh, has really perfected the recipe for 
the ideal cowl to sit on your neck um, and be a lovely sort of accessory that's really easy to wear. And uh, I am going to be using some leftover yarns that I got from Frankie Gray Fibers, which is um, the fiber company owned and operated by Jody Brown of the Grocery Girls. I did a test knit for her and I have some leftover yarn. So um, I made um, a hat using these two colors as, oh, my camera doesn't even know what to do with it. Um, and so I use these two colors together to make a gingham, a great gingham hat. I'll pop a picture here. And so I have lots left over. I think I have 71 grams of this color called lipstick. And my camera is like overwhelmed. And I have 80 grams of this yarn, which is called lollipop. And so I'm going to make a striped version of the everyday cowl with these two. This is some DK superwash yarn. And let me see if I have a, a yarn tag. They're both the same base. It is a DK 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So this would be some great yarn if you were interested in making DK socks. It is 50 grams, 112 meters, 122 yards. And I am going to be um, whipping up a cowl, which I'm super excited about because I think it'll be a nice sort of palette cleanser. And then the world's my oyster. I haven't really decided what I'm gonna knit after that. It could be that I finally tackle the uh, Marseille sweater by Petite Knits. It looks like this. I have the yarn for this and I have been really looking forward to wearing this project. So it could be that one, or it could be another uh, lightweight summer knit, a tank top maybe, or a short sleeve shirt. I haven't decided, um, but I would like a couple more hand knit warm weather um, tops that I can wear because I have plenty of really warm sweaters, but summer or warm weather knits or something that, uh, I don't have as many with, I think partly the reason for that is because the types of yarn used to make, um, a comfortable warm weather knit are often things like silks or cottons that I just don't have as much experience with. I apologize. My dog has decided to join me and chew on one of his um, chewies. Um, yeah, I just don't have as much experience with cottons or silks and I don't have as much of that in stock as in in stash. So I think that's something I'll be playing with a little bit over the next couple months. So we'll see, we'll see what jumps onto my needles. But for now, I'm looking forward to maybe a little silky scarf and maybe the uh, everyday cowl, DRK everyday cowl. What are you knitting right now? Are you finding that you're interested in some warm weather knits that you can wear through the summer? Um, let me know, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Jolene Knits a Lot. Oh, I have one more thing to share with you before I go. And that is, um, the Gathering Threads Festival, which is coming up in Edmonton next month. It's happening on May 6th and 7th, 5th, 6th and 7th, that first weekend in May. And uh, I will be attending. So if you are also in the Edmonton area, I hope you'll be there and I hope you'll attend. And if you do, come and see me. I, uh, I will be attending Friday and Saturday, possibly Sunday. On Saturday, I'm taking a class on granny squares, crocheting granny squares, which is something I haven't really done a lot of, and I'm just looking forward to trying something new. I have some yarn picked out and a crochet needle, so I'm all ready um, to, to branch out in another direction. And uh, I'm sort of a little bit nervous to tell you that um, I will be doing a demo at the Gathering Threads Festival. I was contacted by a local crafter who has been um, making her own 3D printed sock machine and having some um, difficulties possibly in putting it together and getting it working. And she asked if I would do a demo at the Gathering Threads uh, Festival. And uh, I said yes, <laughs> and I'm a little nervous about it because I'm not an expert in any way in um, sock machine, circular sock machine usage. Uh, I'm a dabbler and I guess I'm an adventurous dabbler. I, I have created a couple of them and I know how to use them. Um, and I'll be having my two machines on display um, 
at the festival from 2.30 to 4 on Saturday. And I'll be uh, trying to crank some tubes and show you how to use these machines. My husband will be there to be answering all of the many 3D printing questions because he is my source guy. Uh, and so I really hope that if you're around, you'll come and say yeah. hi to me because I'm, I am a little bit nervous about this. I'm feeling a little bit out of my depth, <laughs> as it were. And so um, friendly faces will always be welcome. Also, I might have some little things to give away. So um, I'm not going to spoil the surprise until after the festival. But if you're around and uh, you're interested in 3D sock machines, or if you just want to say hi, I would love to see you there. I will be at the artist workshop area. I believe, um, from 2.30 to 4 on Saturday, the first Saturday in March. Please stop by and say hello. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to uh, doing all the shopping like you are and checking out all the vendors. Uh, I'm looking forward to my class on crocheting some granny squares and just uh, being with all the makers and enjoying that really lovely time um, with people who are like-minded. So I hope I will see you there at the Gathering Threads Festival. If you see me wandering around, please come and say hi. And really, I mean it, please come and see me at 2.30 to 4 because I need some friendly faces and some people <laughs> to bolster me up a little bit. So I'm feeling a little bit, um, a little nervous about this whole demo, se demo session. Anyway, in the next couple of weeks, I hope that you find time to knit, or to crochet, or to cross stitch, or to fill your cup, do the things that you enjoy doing. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.